the dead of night on July 7th, 2021, the sound of gunfire. <laughs> shattered the peace in the affluent neighborhood of Pelerin, Port of Prince. President Jovenel Moise was brutally assassinated in his own home by a highly trained group of mercenary killers. This shocking act will plunge the already fragile nation of Haiti into unprecedented chaos and turmoil. The consequences have reverberated through Haitian society like a tidal wave of violence, instability, and human suffering. As the country descended into lawlessness, powerful gangs filled the power vacuum, terrorizing citizens and even taking control of key infrastructure. Premier étape dans bataille nous c'est rivé retirer Ariel Henry sous pouvoir. Ensuite pour nous déclencher bataille réelle contre pouvoir et 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 pour nous déclencher bataille réelle contre système qui là, système oligarque corrompu, politicien traditionnel corrompu. This is the story of how the assassination of one man brought a proud nation to its knees and the controversial actions since then by those vying for power. Strap in as I take you through the harrowing event that have rocked Haiti since that fateful night in 2021. This is Lifeless TV. My name is Peter Tosh Williams. Don't go away. In the early morning hours of July 7th, 2021, the world awoke to the shocking news that Jovenel Moise, the sitting president of Haiti, had been assassinated in an audacious attack on his private residence. The 53-year-old leader was killed by a highly trained group of over 20 mercenaries, including retired Colombian soldiers who stormed his home under the cover of darkness. The assassination further destabilized the fragile political situation in Haiti, which was already plagued by widespread protest, gang violence, and allegations of corruption and democratic backsliding under, under President uh, Jovenel's increasingly authoritarian rule. At the time of his death, he had been ruling by decree for over a year after dissolving most parliament in a bitter power struggle. In the aftermath, a temporary power vacuum was created as various political factions jockeyed for control. After two weeks of turmoil, Ariel Henry was appointed as the new interim prime minister with a task of organizing fresh presidential election. A veteran neurosurgeon and a former cabinet minister, the 71-year-old Henry took over the duties of acting president with a mandate to unify the nation and restore the democratic order. However, Ariel Henry inherited a nation in chaos. Runaway inflation and the crippling shortage of fuel and the basic goods brought daily life to a standstill for many Haitians. Meanwhile, heavily armed gangs seized control of entire neighborhoods, engaging in kidnapping, shoot out the police, and imposing their own rapid brands of governance through fear and violence. Recognizing the dire situation in Haiti, the international community attempted to intervene and stabilize the country. In the late 2023, the Kenyan president, William Ruto, offered to deploy 1,000 Kenyan police officers as peacekeepers to help restore law and order amidst the gang violence and the political chaos. Acting President Ariel Henry saw this as a potential lifeline. Facing intense pressure from aid groups and allies like the United States, he made the controversial decision to travel to Nairobi in March 2024 to finalize the security agreement with the Kenyan government. However, Henry's trip abroad left a precarious power vacuum back in Port of Prince. Emboldened by the absence of even fragile central authority, the major gang federations like G9 and GPEP rapidly expanded their territorial control. In videos circulating on social media, heavily armed gang members were seen brazenly taking over the main international airport, government buildings, and even the official residence of the prime minister and the president. The capital descended into near anarchy. <laughs> Gang leaders announced their refusal to accept the Kenyan police deployment, calling it, in quote, 
foreign invasion force. They issued an ultimatum demanding Henry's immediate resignation, accusing him of clinging to power by continuously delaying overdue presidential elections. In a shocking display of their newfound power, the Allied Gang Federation took full advantage of Henry's absence to seize control of strategic assets across Port of Prince. Fighters from G9, GPEP, and other armed groups stormed and occupied the Toussaint Louverture International Airport, cutting off key transportation lifeline. In scenes more reminiscent of an invading military force, masked and heavily armed gang members in armored vehicles were recorded on video taking up positions around the airport terminals and runways. All flights were immediately grounded as they asserted complete control over the air hub. Their territorial gains didn't stop there. The National Palace, which serves as the official residence of Haiti's head of state, was captured. So too were other various critical government buildings and the ministries in the capital, effectively decapitating what little remained of Haiti's governing apparatus. From this newly conquered position of power, the Allied gang issued a defiant statement. They categorically rejected the planned deployment of Kenyan police officers, describing it as a foreign occupation force. More ominously, they delivered an ultimatum to Ariel Henry either immediately resign from presidency or face being forcefully removed. The gangs accused Henry of unconstitutionally overstaying his term as uh, interim prime minister, which was originally set to expire in February 2022 after overseeing new election. But those polls never took place with Henry repeatedly postponing them using his dwindling presidential authority and emergency powers to overstay. With the capital held hostage by the powerful gangs, a real Henry found himself with no choice but to resign from the presidency while still in Kenya. The veteran politician knew that attempting to return to Port of Prince would likely spark widespread bloodshed that Haiti could ill afford. In a televised address from Nairobi, a somber Henry announced he was stepping down effective immediately, condemning the unacceptable gang violence that had made his position untenable. This move avoided potentially catastrophic confrontation, but also created perilous leadership vacuum. We have an entente different sectors of the life national. The government has retired the school immediately after the installation of the With no clear interim successor declared, multiple factions began joking for power and unprecedented turmoil swept the Caribbean nation. Gangs fought street battles against each other and the Haiti's under-resourced police forces as they vied for territorial control of the capital's key neighborhoods. You have been watching this in-depth report on the crisis in Haiti exclusively on Lifelines TV with me here, Peter Tosh. Williams. If you haven't yet, kindly make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss these hard-hitting documentaries exploring the world's most critical issues. Like this video to help spread awareness and share it across your social platforms to spark discussion on what the international community should take to assist the deeply suffering Haitian people before it is too late. Before I bid adieu, I want to leave you with this. Despite its long, turbulent history of hardship, Haiti was once the first free black nation after succeeding in overthrowing colonial rule. Its very existence represented the revolution ideals of liberty and human rights triumphing over oppression. So guys, as you see the grave images of despair emerging from Port of Prince today, ask yourself, how can the world reckon with allowing such a long-held beacon of hope and perseverance to potentially be extinguished. What meaningful solidarity can be offered before all is lost? The time for decisive action in Haiti is now. The choice that awaits falls upon us all. I've been your host, Peter Tosh Williams. This is Lifeless TV. You've come to the end of this video. Alhamdulillah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Inshallah, tomorrow is a new day.